What's going on investors? In today's video, we're gonna talk all about hard money loans in 2022. So if you're a brand new real estate investor and you're trying to fix and flip a project, but you need some more funds, then you definitely need to watch this video to see how you can use hard money loans to help you buy your next flip project. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. My name is Sean and I love real estate. I've been a hard money lender now for several years now and I've funded hundreds of millions of dollars worth of deals and helped dozens of investors, many of which have come from this YouTube channel. So I figured I'd make another video here to update everyone with the new terms, new guidelines and whatnot. And of course, to break down what hard money loans are for our new investors who are just coming to the channel today. So if you haven't already, I highly encourage you guys to subscribe to the channel to see more videos just like this one. So let's hop into it. So what is a hard money loan exactly? A hard money loan is a loan that is going to be based on the hard asset, so the actual property itself, more so than on your personal background. So to compare a hard money loan versus a traditional loan, a normal loan from a bank like Wells Fargo or Chase will ask you for a lot of documentation about your personal income. They're going to want to know your W-2 income, they want to see your tax returns, and they want to make sure that the income that you have can support purchasing this other property. The loan also has to be done on a property that is in rent ready condition or in good condition. So if the property is missing a bathroom or is just in poor condition, they won't lend on it. Hard money lenders won't necessarily look at your income and they also won't look at the property's condition that much. As long as they know that there's a deal to be had, then they will likely lend to you on that deal. So as an example, when I first started flipping homes, I had a relatively decent income working as an engineer. However, at that time, I'd already owned my primary residence and I already owned a couple of rental properties over in Florida. So the banks looked at my total income and said, your income doesn't support this home you already own, these other rentals that you own, and a new property in the Bay Area. Like the numbers just don't work out. On top of that, the property's condition wasn't the best, so it likely wouldn't pass an appraisal. So I went to a hard money lender and they said, Sean, you actually have a lot of savings. You can use those savings to cover the down payment, the closing costs, the rehab costs, and still have enough for reserves. And yeah, maybe your income can't support this loan, but it's a transactional loan. So within 12 months, we're gonna be in and out anyway. They saw that the deal had a lot of potential and they gave me the loan. So it enabled me to be able to buy this property. Now, of course, the downside of a hard money loan is that they are relatively expensive. As of this recording, interest rates are somewhere in the mid fives, which is, you know, not too good, not too bad, but hard money rates are gonna be somewhere in the mid eights. So it's definitely a lot higher, but to make it less bad, at least hard money loans are interest only, which means that you're not paying the principal portion. Like you're only paying the you know 8.5% of the loan amount every single month. So again, they're mostly used for people who need that transactional funding, something within a 12 month time frame. And again, the most common scenario is that they're buying a property to fix and flip it. So let's go into some of the terminology behind it. So the first one is LTV. You're gonna hear that a lot, and that just determines how much your loan is relative to the value. So LTV stands for loan to value. For brand new investors who've never done a deal before, most hard money lenders are gonna limit you to 80% of LTV. So if you can imagine a property that's worth $500,000, then 80% LTV is $400,000. For more experienced investors, the leverage usually increases to 90% LTV. So again, for that $500,000 property, now our loan will be 450,000 because that's 90% of 500,000. Most people who do get hard money loans try to get the max LTV they can because they wanna leverage. They wanna use other people's money. Now that comes at a bit of a trade-off because the more you have an LTV, usually the higher your pricing will be as well. So we're going to pricing next. And the two big things to note about pricing are the rates and the fees. So your rate is your interest rate. Like I mentioned before, for most new investors, probably gonna be at an 8.5% interest rate. Now it's not 8.5% every single month, but it's 8.5% every single year. So it's 8.5% every single year, and it's based on the loan amount, not your purchase price. So in this example, let's say you're doing an 80% loan for a $500,000 purchase price, which means that your loan is for $400,000. Now at $400,000, at an 8.5% interest rate, your total interest for the whole year is $34,000. So then your monthly payments are gonna be $2,833.33. So that's a common question I get. Like, am I paying 8.5% every single month? No, you're paying 8.5% for the whole year, and your monthly payments are that number divided by 12. The other things to note about are the fees. So typically you're gonna be charged an origination fee and processing fee. Origination fee is typically gonna be 1% or 2% of the loan amount, and that's paid upfront. And another one is a processing fee, which is like a flat fee for all loans being done. So an origination fee, again, scales with the loan amount. So if your loan was for $400,000 and you charge one point, that means your origination fees are $4,000 and processing fees vary between $1,000 and $2,000. So just add that on top for your total fees of $6,000 for this loan. Hard money loans usually last 12 months, although it can be flexible. So some people, they do development projects. 
and 12 months really isn't feasible to go through all the planning and the construction. So there's ways to get around it. You know, you could ask for a 24 month loan, a 36 month loan, and some hard money lenders even offer you five year loans or 16 month loans. It all kind of depends on what you're looking for. So when you talk to a loan officer, really just tell them your plans and they can create something that works well for you. Another thing to note when talking to other hard money lenders are the prepayment penalties. So some hard money lenders want you to hold on to your loan for at least three or four months. Again, not every hard money lender does this. At my company, we do not have a prepayment penalty, but some do. So just be aware. And what that means is if you do a project and let's say it goes really, really well and you flip it within two months, if you have a four month prepayment penalty, that means that when you sell the property, the lender will say, well, you owe us at least four months of interest payments. You've only used two, so pay us an additional two months and we're good to go. Again, this is probably a negotiable thing that you can potentially wave away, but just be aware that that is out there. And usually for the longer term loans, like the 24 month loans, 36 month loans, or 60 month loans, those usually do have a prepayment penalty associated with it. So again, just be aware. Another thing to note are ARVs. So an ARV is your after repair value. So as a flipper, you should know these numbers. You should know your purchase price, your rehab cost, as well as your ARV. So that's the target that you're trying to sell the property at. Now, one thing that many hard money lenders will look at is your ARV relative to your loan amount. So they want the total loan amount, meaning the loan for your purchase price and the loan for your construction, if you are getting a rehab loan, to be less than 75% of your ARV. So again, that protects the lender that we're not giving you this big fat loan and your ARV is super small. Because if your ARV is really small relative to your loan amount, that means that you're actually not gonna be making any profit on the deal. So we don't wanna to lend to deals that don't make sense and I'm sure you also don't wanna get a loan for a property that doesn't make sense either. Another thing that people ask me a lot is what do they need to submit for a full file? So on our side, what we wanna see from you guys are your ID. If you're gonna buy through an LLC, then we wanna see your articles of incorporation, your operating agreement, as well as your EIN number. Of course, we also wanna see your bank statements or brokerage forms to show that you have enough funds to successfully complete the deal. So that usually means you know, your down payment, your closing costs, your rehab costs, and six months worth of reserves, also known as six months worth of interest payments. Because basically, if you don't have these things, then you're not gonna be able to do your deal successfully. We're gonna give you the big fat loan, you're gonna put all of your money into the down payment, and then you won't have enough money for the rehab cost. So then what do you do? You're gonna sit on your hands and do nothing for many months and lose money? No, we wanna make sure you're successful. So we're gonna look for all your bank statements to show you have enough money to do the deal. Of course, when it comes to the property itself, we do need to see the fully executed purchase agreement. So it needs to be signed by both parties. We'll need to know your title and escrow contact information. So again, your realtor should know that information and then give it to us. We'll likely need to do an appraisal. These are not full appraisals. These are known as BPOs, also known as broker price opinion. These are way faster than full appraisals and they turn around within a week. But we use that to get a good valuation of what the property is like. We get to see what the interior is like. You know, is it burned down somewhere or is it just a normal house? And we also want to know the contact information for your insurance provider. So with the hard money loan, we do need a specific type of insurance. Usually we just ask for your insurance provider and then we do all the talking on the back end to get a policy that works for us. So another thing to note are loan minimums. To do a loan for a $100,000 property and to do a loan for a $2 million property is very similar. The amount of work is almost the same. But the amount the hard money lender gets paid is very different between a $100,000 loan and a $2 million loan, which means that they have loan minimums. For our company, we won't do a loan below $150,000, so that usually translates to a purchase price of around $200,000 or so. There are other hard money lenders out there that will do loans for $50,000. And of course, under that, I would recommend just going to a private money lender, find a friend or family member that believes in you, and work with them for this particular deal. However, if you are starting to flip houses in the $1 million, $2 million price range, most family members won't be comfortable giving you the loan, so that's where you can come to us to do your hard money loans. Another thing to know is on the internet, on TikTok, on YouTube, we do hear a lot of people who are doing deals with no money down. I wanna make it clear that it is possible to do deals with none of your own money, but generally speaking, if you're just starting out and you're brand new, most lenders will not be comfortable giving you a loan with none of your own skin in the game. Because if you have none of your own money in the project, then it's very easy for you to walk away if the deal goes sour. So we wanna make sure that you stay in the deal, you're accountable, and that's why, again, for most newer investors, the leverage is less. We only offer 80% LTV instead of 90% LTV. If you really cannot afford anything and you do need a money partner, have them come in as an equity partner. So as long as this other person is willing to be on title and sign and guarantee the loan, then that's okay. And as a final tip, when should you and when should you not use hard money loans? So you should not use a hard money loan if, you know, one, you plan on holding on this property for a very long time and the property doesn't need any major work. In that case, just go with a conventional loan. The rates are a lot cheaper. 
you don't have to pay closing costs twice. Uh, you also shouldn't use a hard money loan if you're trying to buy your own personal residence. Most hard money lenders will only do loans for business purposes only, which means rentals or fix and flip, and they will not lend on a property that is intended to be your primary residence. You also shouldn't use a hard money loan if you're putting all of your money into one particular deal, because if the market turns on you, the interest rates are pretty high and it's gonna hurt. And every single year, you're gonna have to refinance, which means more points and more fees. But you should use a hard money loan if you do have the funds to do a deal. You should use a hard money loan if you need to buy the deal very quickly and you can't wait 30 days for a conventional lender to give you the loan. You also should use a hard money loan if it makes sense. Like for my first deal, I paid a lot in fees and interest from hard money lender, but I was able to make $300,000 of profit on that deal. So use hard money loans when they make sense, but don't use hard money loans when they don't make sense. And of course, if you guys have any more questions about getting a hard money loan, feel free to contact me. You can schedule a call with me with the link down in the description below. I am a hard money lender and I can do loans in most states in the US. Well, I hope you guys all enjoy this video about the basics of hard money lending in 2022. If you guys have any questions about hard money loans, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. And if you thought you got any value out of this video, please give me a huge favor and smash the like button to help feed the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching this video guys and I'll see you next time. Take care.